Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel, Sincerely Henna. My name is Henna for those of you who are new and I am a registered nurse. I went to nursing school a few years back and you guys, it was one of the most difficult times of my life because the amount of workload you have and the amount of tests and the amount of projects that are due and clinicals and everything, it's basically like a full-time job. And I used to refer to it as medical boot camp. <laughs> So anyways, there is four semesters in nursing school. There's block one, block two, block three, block four. Block one is basically a semester where you get introduced to nursing. Block two is more of cardiology, respiratory. You get into the nitty gritty details of the different systems. Block three for me was pediatric, psych. And then block four is block two on steroids. So basically for me, block one was when I felt like I was kind of thrown to the wolves. Block two was a little hard. Block three is when I mastered studying and then block four was a breeze. Today I'm gonna to be discussing four study tips that helped me tremendously in nursing school and I hope that it can be beneficial to you as well. So study tip number one, using websites like Khan Academy and Simple Nursing were so beneficial to me because they provided the content that was taught in class. So anytime I would come back from classes, I would go on these websites and refresh my memory on the different systems that were taught. So Khan Academy has a bunch of content, like it has pre-nursing classes and nursing courses that you're currently taking. It has anatomy, it has physiology, it has chemistry, it has literally everything. So if you don't understand a subject that's taught in class, you can directly just go to that website and learn everything through there. And then Simple Nursing was a great study resource. Like if there's anything you take away from today's video, it's Simple Nursing. So Mike Linares is the YouTube educator that's behind all of the videos. He he goes over diabetes, he breaks down different respiratory systems, different cardiology systems. So for me, that was a great resource. Anytime I learned something in class, I would just hop on his website and just you know go over all the study resources that were available. So I highly recommend bookmarking those two websites. Tip number two. Tip number two is buying a calendar. Not a tiny one, not a small one, a big one just like this. You guys, you need this in your life. If you're in nursing school, PA school, uh, medical school, make sure to buy yourself a calendar like this so you can visually see what is due and when it's due. So in nursing school, you're gonna have teachers that tell you the exam dates in the beginning of the semester. You need to make sure you write it down on your calendar. So even if it's, let's say your exam is on the 27th, your cardiology exam is on the 27th. Cardiology and the date today is, let's say it's the 13th today. So you have two weeks to study. But the thing is, in nursing school, you have about 10 chapters to study up until that date. It doesn't mean you should procrastinate because in block one, I learned my lesson. I literally thought, okay, I have a whole month or a couple of weeks to study for this exam. Maybe I can do it the last week. You guys cannot even miss a day of studying. Even if it means studying for, let's say, two to five hours, you have to put in the work. Why? Because there is so much content that is said in those couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So what I would do is I would just put the exam dates on the calendar. Let's say they said that the respiratory exam is March 18th, which is the middle of the month. So you have, what, another month to study for that, but that doesn't mean you procrastinate. You could probably get away with that in college, but not in nursing school. So my thing was, anytime an instructor told us that there is gonna be an exam, I, or you know, referring to the syllabus, I would write it in this calendar. And up until that date, I would write down what I'm gonna do every single day up until that exam. So cardiology is a general term for so many different heart issues. So there's MI, there is, which is cardiac arrest, there is strokes, there is so many different types of cardiology uh, issues. So what I would do is I would study like a day and a half a certain topic, each topic for about a day to two days. And I would write it in my calendar. 
So that is the second study tip that I highly recommend and it is so important to do this because once you have everything set out visually for you on a wall, you're more likely to do it. And I actually do this at home for my bills. I do this for SAF's travel events. We, we do it literally for everything. So if you go in our room, one wall in our finance room is literally all calendars and it's so helpful. Study tip number three. So if you're like me and you're a visual learner, this will come in so handy. Even if you're not, this will be very fun to do. So what I would do in, I think I started this in block three. This is when I officially mastered the art of studying. I would create maps. So I would create visual maps of each issue. For example, let's say we have a patient who has COPD. So I will literally take a blank construction paper and in the middle, let's say I'll do it in black, I will write COPD and I'll draw a big circle around it. Now, what is COPD? It's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So basically what I would do, and this is something that I've started in block three, is write the disease in the middle of the paper. So I have COPD written, and I write the definition up here, signs and symptoms over here, labs, treatments, and nursing interventions. Now, I did this for literally every single condition and disease that I learned about in that certain block. So I would do probably, let's say 15 different respiratory maps. I would do 15 different heart or cardiology maps. I would do pediatric maps. I would do all these different kind of maps just to help me visualize and understand each disease. So. Instead of reading just directly from a book and trying to understand the different conditions that are taught, having it on paper and putting it on your wall, yes, I did that, was very, very beneficial and it really helped me understand the diseases. So that is another tip that I highly recommend. And let's say there's multiple diseases. So there is two diseases that sound similar. So I will have, let's say, COPD and under it, asthma. I would do the same thing for asthma. I'll write asthma here, definitions, signs and symptoms, interventions, all of that. If they looked, if two diseases looked very, very similar, like similar signs and symptoms, similar definition, it's so hard to remember them. What I would do is highlight the symptom that's, that was specific to COPD and highlight the specific symptom that was prominent in asthma. So asthma is what? Wheezing. COPD, I would say shortness of breath. So you can go really far with this. And I wish I had a picture of my room during nursing school. I look like a crazy scientist that just had a bunch of maps all over my wall, plus my calendar. It was just a recipe for goodness. Moving on to study tip number four. So the last study tip that I have for you guys is about practicing questions from the very first block at the moment you are taught the first subject in class. Practice questions. Get one of those big RN nursing NCLEX books and start studying from there. That is divided into topics. So there's cardiology, there's respiratory, there's digestive issues, there is neuro. Start practicing questions because that will prepare you for the NCLEX. I practice questions from there. I practice it from UWorld. UWorld.com was such a great study tool for me. The wording of UWorld was so similar to the actual NCLEX that anytime I would go home and study, I would make sure to do at least 20 to 50 questions a night just so that I can master my NCLEX. So that was another thing. And then practicing questions on flashcards. I have this Q&A review cards from um, Saunders. This is so helpful. You can literally pick out a topic and just study, study, study questions. So my advice to you guys is to take into consideration everything that I went over from the calendar to test questions, to those simple nursing and Khan Academy websites, to these helpful maps. All of that together, every single day, literally every single day, studying those will help you succeed. I'm not the type of person that can read a book and just absorb everything, which I, I wish I could. And if you can do that, kudos to you. But I'm the type of person that needs to learn it in class, 
record lectures, come home and study my notes for the day, watch YouTube videos on it by my Linaris, practice questions, and have Sayaf test me on my NCLEX review cards because that is such a great way to absorb information. You need it from different places. That's when it will stick in your head. <laughs> I hope this video helped you tremendously. If it did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And in the comments section, leave below different study tips that helped you when you were in nursing school or whatever school so that I can learn as well and we can learn from each other. I also wanted to mention that these scrubs are from a brand that I absolutely love. It's called Janu. Check it out, I'll link it down below. They have beautiful styles, beautiful colors, beautiful materials and you can't go wrong with getting scrubs from them. For more fun content, make sure to check out my blog at SincerelyHenna.com and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.